What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today. Let me give you a little more information about today's special guest. She is a swim instructor, a yoga, yoga instructor, a dance enthusiast, and a cycle enthusiast. And her mission is to offer programs that encourage body positivity, movement, liberation, and expression for all body types to support a healthy mind, body, heart, and spirit. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Althea Smith. How are you doing today? Hi, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. But thanks again for stopping by and showing the Brave Arts community some love today. I'm excited about today's topic. Let's jump into this because uh, and we talked about some of this when we were on Twitter. But how do you remain positive while single? And do we make being single a bad thing? Why, why do we make being single a bad thing? Oh, we just jumping right in. Yes. <laughs> well, first of all, um, yeah, so I've been single for maybe like a going on two well it really should be kind of on the, the three years <laughs> now um and the thing is like at first when you come out of a relationship being single can be very scary it can be very hard especially if you've been with somebody you spend all the time with them you wake up with them you go to sleep with them you're on the phone with them all the time so it's just like that's your person and then it just kind of stops um the thing is it's not easy at first it is hard it is hard but sometimes you have to go through those hard times to get to the good um i think that people make being single bad because it's uncomfortable or maybe they think it's uncomfortable because they never get to really fully develop themselves, um, fully go out and explore other things. They get so wrapped up into the other person that they neglect themselves. So um, that's one of the reasons why I think single is being hard. What makes it easy um, or easier, mm -hmm. um, because the thing is like, I, I, um, I'm single, but I'm not, uh, like oh like single we don't need a man like that i feel like that's a different category of people mm -hmm. um my um i just feel like pe as people we need each other so of course um i would want to be in a relationship but i don't want to be in a relationship that's unfulfilling for me mm -hmm. so um um so back to the question of um how to remain confident while being single, first of all, find things that you like to do um, and explore those. So um, the, especially now that it's summertime, there's so many outdoor activities. There's outdoor, con I'm in New York. So we have outdoor concerts, outdoor movies. Like you will literally be in Central Park and run into like an outdoor party with a full DJ setup and everything. You're dancing, you're enjoying people having a good time, even just sitting in the park um maybe writing singing explore things that you like to do think back to your childhood of things that you like to do whether it's going outside playing flying kites throwing frisbees yesterday i was sitting in the park and this dog like came to me with his frisbee like his owner was throwing it at him mm -hmm. but then the dog comes up to me with the frisbee so i grabbed the frisbee and i threw it with the dog and it was just like such a cute like um it was a cute moment and the owner is like, oh my God, thank you so much. And you know, um, mm -hmm. just doing things that you like to do, reading, writing, um, making sure you pour into yourself um, as far as like uh, eating properly, working out, uh, um, reading things that's gonna be fulfilling to your mind and your heart um, and still believing that love is out there for you to get. Yeah, I love that because <laughs> And I'm glad because I asked you this question about remaining positive because mm -hmm. during our chats when we would talk on Twitter or I would hear things that you say and I'm just like, that's what I'm talking about because right. I do believe whatever you put out there is what you're going to attract because people will yeah. say, yeah, I don't need a man or I can't stand women or this and that. And I'm like, well, that's what you're putting out there. So that's what you're going to get. 
Right. You know, and and who who wants to who gonna slide in your DM after saying stuff like that? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, right. I don't want right. a Debbie Downer. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. So I mean, of course, sometimes it does get frustrating. Yes. Um, and sometimes when you run into like the same type of people, you might feel a little bit. Um, sometimes you may feel discouraged. That's the word I was looking for. Discouraged. So sometimes you may feel discouraged when you are um, maybe running into the same people or the same types of people. But sometimes that means that, okay, that means maybe you need to pour into yourself a little bit more. Leave those people alone. Stop trying to look for something in some body mm-hmm. and look within and, you know, figure yourself out so you don't have to be like on the on that on that hunt especially as a woman i feel i'm kind of old school when it comes to that like i'm not supposed to be on the hunt mm. i'm supposed to, like somebody's supposed to hunt me you understand what i'm saying <laughs> so, I, I, hear so, yeah. <laughs> I hear you because men you know we are hunters we we do feel good about um making that initial contact well some men i know a lot right. of guys are shy you know but yeah. even still when you're still able to I guess get, you know, can we be connected on Instagram? I don't know how people connect nowadays. Do people say, let me get your Instagram or do people ask for your numbers? Like, <laughs> how do people well, even connect? You know, it's dating? a little of both. It's a okay. little of both. So some people will they'll be, they'll be like, can I get your Instagram? And I personally hate that. Like, I personally hate if I'm meeting somebody face to face in human form mm. and they they want to get to know me and they ask for my Instagram versus asking me for my number. Mm. I feel it's a cheat code. I feel like you're literally just going to scroll through my Instagram and try to look for talk points as opposed to having genuine conversation with me and then finding out. So it's like almost like a kind of prejudge, a little cheating. No, like, I no, I personally don't like that. So if somebody does like ask me for my Instagram versus my phone number, when we're meeting human, like human face to face, I could understand if we already met like through um, an app and then we continue through in other apps, mm. that's different. But if we meet in human form, you have like, to me, you have a bigger advantage because you have me in, in the flesh. You understand? Mm. And you're not taking advantage of that. So that's why it just, I don't, I personally don't like it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's, 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 that's good. I feel that. Mm-hmm. Because you can't go down the timeline and just check out everything and oh she got a dog oh she got right uh, exactly or, like we yeah. can, you literally just have genuine conversation you'll be able to find out so much things from people mm-hmm. you know if you just have genuine conversation if you're listening if you're listening you're gonna be able to ask questions gotcha. and then you're gonna be able to ask follow up questions so you know I feel that. Okay. What what lesson did your last relationship teach you? Oh, oh my God. There's literally like so many. Um, I feel like it's so crazy because I feel like even now there's still like things that I'm learning from the past, but I know for sure when you see things, mm. <laughs> pay attention to them. And I feel like, well, there's two things. Cause some people are like, well, you saw the red flags and you chose to ignore them. Sometimes it's not necessarily that simple. Sometimes you're a little bit too immature to, to realize or recognize how magnificent, how like big and massive those red flags are, how deep they go. And that was one of my big things. Like I saw some things and I'm like, okay, well, like, like, I don't know what you wanted me to do. But as I got older and dealing with the person more, and then even after the breakup, having conversations, it was like, okay, this person was going through things way before me from way back when that they brought here that I'm, it's like, I'm not even qualified to deal with. So it's just like, it's, it's almost like I'm, I'm, I, I'm in a lose lose situation because it's like if you're not gonna do the work on yourself, there's literally nothing I can do. Mm. I'm like I'm not I'm not professionally equipped to do it. <laughs> I'm not I'm not equipped in any way to do it because that's literally something that you have to do with. People have to learn to deal with their own stuff before coming into relationships. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. I agree. And I, I think too, my only pushback with that would be some people just aren't aware. Some people don't have self-awareness or they choose to be blind to the fact that there's something that you need to address. Right. And people can be telling you the same thing over and over again, and they just don't want to hear it. You know, you might have that one hard headed girlfriend. You've been trying to tell her about herself and she just refused to listen or oh, yeah. a friend or, or a significant other, you know, that whole thing. And they just don't get it. And they'll keep repeating the same cycle and cycle over and over again. And then here it is, you get in a relationship with them and you try to tell them that same thing. Yeah. And yeah. you just choose to be hard headed. Cause, uh, I, and I, I tweeted this the other day. I said, self-awareness is top tier. Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing too, because you can literally see why, um, because they lack that self-awareness or they're choosing to ignore it. I'm not sure if it's because of denial or maybe fear of addressing those issues. Mm -hmm. um, you will literally see the same patterns in different relationships, whether it's romantic, whether it's friendship, where it's family, it literally rolls over into so many different areas. And that's something that I noticed. And then it was to a point where I was talking to him like, look, we're not going to be together, but you can't do this to other other people who you want to be in relationships with. And I'm like, this is not even about me right now. It's literally, this is what you're doing and people are not going to like this. So I'm like, it's clear that this is not, gonna, we're in a relationship. I'm like, this is not going to work out. But what you're doing here to me, the, the next girl that you deal with is going to have the same issue. <laughs> yep. And lo and behold, that definitely has happened. <laughs> and with other friends. And with other friends. So it's just like, I feel like when it did start to happen enough, I felt like they finally was like, all right, let me go try to work on this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I was thinking about, there was something that you said that I wanted to, to talk about and address in detail. Maybe it'll come back to me later. Mm -hmm. But I was talking about self-awareness. But anyway, I... I totally agree because some people they refuse to change some people they get it and then it right. takes a long time for them to change yeah um and then I sometimes I wonder like do we have that grace for people like okay I know I have my hang-ups but it's right. gonna take me a year or two to get over it are you gonna stick around depending on a hang-up I guess yeah exactly like for me now I'm just like um th uh, at that moment um, I feel like maybe I did have more time to, I guess, not necessarily see if it would change, but it's just like, okay, you know, relationships are going to go through kind of growing pains. So it's like, you do have to expect some type of growing pains. Um, but it's just like, just like you said, it's like the depth of them, like make it really, uh, like make you really know if it's worthwhile to even, you know, stay through it. So if I hadn't, it's like two things. If I had known then what I know now, would I have stayed? No. Mm -hmm. But at this time, dealing with that has made me dive in so much into um, just like um, psychiatry and just like um, different uh, mental illnesses in as far as like depression and anxiety. And that's why I even got my yoga training um, as a psychotherapeutic yoga training. So it helps, um, it's supposed to help with um, your, uh, your, your weekly visits to your uh, therapist. Mm. So it can help with your anxiety, help with your depression and everything like that. Mm. Yeah, because okay. you, you got to take care of your health, your mental health and your physical Absolutely. health. Absolutely. They go hand in hand. Exactly. Uh, yeah. What is confidence? We kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, and how, like, how do you define confidence? Because you do a lot of different things, like from being a cyclist and yoga and, 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 and dance, like all these different things that you do. How does mm -hmm. one gain confidence? Um, I feel like confidence is literally like something that is inside of you. That understanding that there's only you <laughs> like literally just that alone. It's like, there's only one you There's 
only ever going to be one you. So it's like, that's how special you are. Mm -hmm. No one, no matter what they say, could take that away from you. So just knowing that, like that alone is just like, I'm unfreaking touchable. I'm mm -hmm. unstoppable. You can't tell me nothing because God single-handedly made me so dope and so bomb and he spent so much time with me you know so um just that understanding alone i feel like people need to really understand that about themselves and then focusing it focusing on their um particular strengths so everybody has their different things some people could do 10,000 backflips and you know then they could go into the circus and get a job or then they could teach people you know so it's just like everybody has their own um strengths and things like that so definitely focusing on those and understanding that there's literally only one you and making yourself better every day mm -hmm. yeah because there is only one you and i love that because when you realize that you are your own individual with a different right set of uh life issues um, absolutely you know and things that you might have overcame things of that nature that is that gives you some confidence and i think too having a community or people who can lift you up or being in that that space of positivity right um, i'm sure that helps a lot as well too because when you get that you start to kind of rewire your mind and start to think a little different because now you're right. hearing more positive things than negative so um Absolutely. Yeah, because it took me years to to gain my confidence because uh -huh. after going through a divorce and all those different things, like I lost my confidence. I had to get it back. Right. Um, and it took a while, but thank God I had that community of people who helped me remind me of who I am. Right. So it's so crazy because like a lot of times, like I'm not sure if like guys put up a front, like oh, they don't care about marriage. Marriage is only for the women or whatever, whatever. And the fact that you said, like, you know, after you got a divorce, you lost your confidence. Um, even though I know you're doing the interview, but I just, I want to ask sure. about a little bit more because I feel like a lot of times we see online that, you know, it's just like, oh, uh, um, you know, the high value woman, high value man, and um, like women just are like, they want to be picked or whatever like that. But this is the first time I'm hearing somebody say like, you know, I lost my confidence after I got divorced. And, you know, that affected me because a lot of times guys make it seem like they don't really care and they do all this for the women, which I personally believe is a lie. I feel like men like men of value and character i feel like they do want to be married because i feel like they do want to create a foundation mm -hmm. so um yeah if you don't mind like just giving me a little bit more of that oh uh, <laughs> yeah I, yeah well first of all i think i'm a little well now that i'm older uh, i don't mind being transparent i don't mind being vulnerable now if i was younger probably would have been like no i'm good and all this other stuff but that gets you nowhere right? right um so i think age has some something some a little bit to do with that because it shows me now that i'm older like i have fewer years ahead of me right <laughs> you know so it's like i really don't have time to waste so i need to be honest with myself first of all uh and being honest with those who i've been entrusted with or people who speak into my life and I realized that when you do have that healthy community of people around you, they can help build you up. But right. I had to, and then and a lot of that comes from, for me, it came from uh, prayer, journaling. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there were just times where I would, you know, just be crying. Like, sometimes right. I'd, be, I'd be in the shower and I was just, uh, just crying. And I'm just <laughs> like, you know, I need to get myself together because there is a loss and let me grieve that loss. Right. So I can pick myself up. And I tell people this all the time. One of the reasons I was able to remarry at the time I did, because people are like, oh, you ain't know her. You only been together six months and you dated long distance. Right. I do believe that when you take the proper time to heal, mm -hmm. your recovery time is faster. Right. I believe God can fast forward some things in your life if you're willing to do the necessary work. 
Absolutely. So I don't know if that answered your question, but. Yeah, it definitely did. And then um, just like uh, just like how you said, um, like that a breakup is kind of like mourning a loss. Yeah. I did realize that it's so crazy. Mm-hmm. So the thing is like people try to bypass that stage and there's no bypassing that stage. You have to go through those that motion. You and it's gonna be a little long, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Yes, just like you said, you have to cry it out. You gotta probably write it out. You pr- probably gotta scream. You probably gotta, I like boxing, go boxing. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? Because you're gonna feel so many different emotions. Feel your emotions. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that, just like you said, it propels you to heal yeah. and then go forward and then being able to be in a, a healthy committed relationship afterwards so yeah yeah for sure and there's a quote that i i read that said time doesn't heal all wounds it's what you do with that time that heals all that part wounds. that part <laughs> yeah. yeah people time heals all wounds no it doesn't exactly because you, know, you can be bitter your whole life right you know, because because daddy left you when you was eight. And now you're right. eighty, you're right? Just a little bitter, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes even like people will like commit an offense to you, mm-hmm. and then they won't like you won't resolve it, but they'll like go away for a year and then come back and try to, and it's just like wait, well, no, <laughs> because you left on this note and it's just like, oh, well, I thought time. Well, no, because the last time you committed this offense. So how how am I knowing that you won't be committing this offense over and over again and trying to trying to like like cure it, put a band-aid over it with time? <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm, yeah, because there yeah. are people out here that's like that. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this, this has been... <laughs> this has been a great show. I want to ask you one last question before yeah. we end. Mm-hmm. I was reading a tweet of yours and you said a black man told me when I went natural that that's why I was single. Then mm-hmm. when I got with someone who wasn't black, he had a problem with that. Moral of the story, don't do anything for anyone else's approval. Do it for you. Can you talk um, about that a little more in detail? I thought that was powerful. Yeah, I mean, well, it really was. It's so crazy because I remember um, when I went natural, I was so, it was, you know, that um, movie um, the that Chris Rock did? Oh, uh, Natural Hair or Black Hair? hair. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. The Good Hair. And it's so crazy because during that time, like, I was swimming a lot, like, a lot more. I was very active. So it was like, I couldn't, I used to perm my hair too. So it was like, I couldn't, like, kind of keep up with my hair and like swimming or or working out excessively because I was always um, sweating out my hair. So I was just like, all right, you know? And then when I saw that film, that documentary, it really opened my eyes to why, um, it's like why we we just kind of as a people were doing certain things. And again, it goes back to the psychology and I'm just like, oh my god it's just like you know when you find out the root of something it's just like oh my god you don't even know sometimes because you're so conditioned to do this thing and it's just like well that's where it's stemming from and that really opened my eyes i really love chris rock for that um for that film because it really did open the eyes of a lot of people and so that is definitely one of the catalysts that really helped me be like all right you know what i'm gonna start on this journey my sister at the time she actually had just went natural Mm -hmm. so she was like trying to tell me to go natural i'm just like uh no so then it was literally like right after that i saw the film and it was just like oh my gosh i'm gonna do it so i did it and everything like that and then yeah so the commentary from this guy this black guy who was just like that's why and at that time i was single i think i had just i think i had just had a breakup actually not too long ago anyway mm. so it was like out um so it's so crazy too that like after that particular breakup it was just like you know how people say like you end up doing a, a massive change like girls do cut their hair or something yeah. so that was actually during that time too so it was just like okay well yeah so um yeah so then he's just like oh um 
he's like, that's why you're single. And I'm like, it was so, it, it was so like, it was like everything that was being said in that movie, it was just like, it was like right here. So it was just like, wow, this is so crazy how the psychology of us mm. is so twisted mm -hmm. from way back when. And I was just like, it really hurt my feelings mm -hmm. because it was just like me going natural. That's what you had to say. Like, it was just so like, I, it just, it just brought up so many things. Like that's literally all you had to say. Yeah. And like I was doing it for someone. I wasn't even doing it for someone. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the comment itself altogether was just so unwarranted, unnecessarily unnecessary. Um, it was stupid. I didn't like it. But uh, um, years though, after years after, I did get with someone who was non-black or whatever, and um. He, I mean, I had natural hair, <laughs> like it. So, but it, it wasn't. Um, but yeah. So one time, the same person, and he he kind of is like in my family, kind of by association because he's my niece's dad. Oh. Um. So um, he was mentioning like how he's not. Like, he's not the right one for me. He was right about him not being the, the right one for me because at this time, at this time, we are broken up. Yeah. But it was just so, it was just like, it was just, it was like, I wasn't sure where it was coming from. He was mm -hmm. like, you know, when somebody's giving you this, these type of advice, Yeah. I'm not sure what's coming from, especially like, I've seen um, videos of like, black guys like that deal with black women saying like i'm sorry that deal with white women mm -hmm. that like condemn black women <laughs> yeah for being with non-black men yeah. and i'm like how are you and your wife is white <laughs> right right but why <laughs> but why are you like condemning me right now because somebody decided or wants to love me like I don't I don't understand. It's very weird. Yeah. So hmm. yeah, um, and that was pretty much a comment to a conversation about um about natural hair. It was I I had quote tweeted somebody else's um tweet and I think they were mentioning um that black guys love your natural hair. It's like you have to love your natural hair. And that's why I responded with that because from my experience this is what a black guy said to me yeah but then a non-black person loved me with my natural hair and then a black guy is like oh well you couldn't find nobody else mm. like, yeah that's sad and, so, you know. it's that weird it's that weird cycle so yeah so at the end of the day it doesn't matter what anybody says because somebody's always going to have something to say so it's like you really have to do things for you don't go natural for Twitter's approval. Don't go natural for black girl's approval. Don't go natural for, you know, anybody else's approval. Yeah. Do it for yourself. That's when I was able to do it. And hopefully other people are able to do it when they're ready to do it, when they come to that conclusion for themselves, mm -hmm. not to please anyone else. Yeah. yeah. I know that's right. Yeah, you got to do it for you at the end of the day because absolutely, when it's, when it's all said and done, at the end of the night, you know, you laying down with you. You have to sleep exactly. with your thoughts. You have to live with right. you. So if you're going to if you're going to live, you might as well live for you because people right. going to live their life and they'll put their stuff off on you and, and right. go about their business. You know, exactly. so it, it took me years to realize that, but I got it better late than never. Uh, this has been a, a great show. It's kind of crazy how fast time flies. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, out there, I want to uh, just acknowledge you for being transparent and being honest about your life and just living for you. Cause one thing I realized about you over this time is that you're going to be who you are unapologetically. So yeah. I just want to acknowledge you for that. And also just doing things out in the community. We're helping people with uh, body positivity, all these different yeah. things, exercise and cycling and all these different things. So I just want to acknowledge you for those things and continue to yeah. do what you do. So thanks again for being a guest on today. Uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. 
Yeah, absolutely. So my handle is I am the queen 87. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook and um, Twitter. Um, I'm on YouTube too, but I haven't posted on YouTube in a while. Yeah. But hopefully that will change soon. But you could definitely subscribe to my channel, youtube.com slash I am the queen 87. And I look forward to meeting you guys. And thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And I'll talk soon. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and this maybe be the beginning of you kicking back into getting your YouTube channel going. Once this shows, maybe you say, hey, maybe I need to get back into this. You know, well, the, thing is, the thing is, it's literally because I'm a one woman show, right? So it's like, even like for today, I'm just like, I literally have to, you know, prepare my mental, like, you know, get myself beautified <laughs> i'm the lights person i'm i'm setting up for production i'm wardrobe i you know yeah. i'm like trying to get some nourishment <laughs> you know <laughs> so i'm literally a one woman show and they that youtube is kind of like a different category i don't really have anybody but like oh do this do this do this do this so i want the thing is like i would like to be a little bit more consistent for youtube especially yeah. i do a lot of like vlogging style content especially on instagram yes which people do love um and and it's more kind of like lifestyle um <clears throat> So it's just like, yes, I do want to transfer it to YouTube, but it's, it just does become very time consuming, especially when you don't have a team. Yes. So, and still trying to like, still trying to like apply the things to get booked to, you know, to work and everything like that. So it does become a little bit difficult. So. Oh, oh yeah. I understand yeah. your pain, believe me, because I have to do editing and all that other good stuff after we get off of here. So. <laughs> Another uh, story. Yeah. Thanks again. <laughs> Brave Forest yeah. Community. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with someone because I'm sure someone might be struggling with their confidence and this video might be the one that helped get you over the fence. So you never know. Make sure you share this with a friend. Also, if you're listening to this on Apple <clears throat> Podcasts, make sure that you hit that you uh, leave a rating and review. If so, that puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. So make sure you leave that rating and review. This is Sean Heineman. At is scary to remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly with special guests. Althea. <laughs> All right, Brave Arts community, take care. <laughs> <laughs>